Welcome to the Sharp 600, brought to you by Covers.com. I'm Rob Cressy, and I'm super excited to be jamming with you on what is the 200th episode of the Sharp 600. Today's episode is also brought to you by Bet America. Right now, they're running a promotion where they're offering new players a risk-free bet up to $1,000. All you've got to do is register for a Bet America account and opt into the promotion. From there, place a bet, and if the first settled bet loses, Bet America will reward players' bonus funds in the amount of the losing bet up to $1,000. Eligibility and restrictions apply. See the website for details. And joining me on today's show to talk about the mindset of sports betting is Ed Miller, author of the book, The Logic of Sports Betting. But first, it's episode 200 of the Sharp 600 podcast, and I have to show some love to you. I know I've only been here for a hot minute, but the reason the show continues to go strong is because of you listening and subscribing and engaging on social. Myself and the covers team very much appreciates it. When I took over from Joe as the podcast host, I came in with a contrarian mindset about how I wanted to run this. While I love giving out picks as much as the next guy, I knew the thing that was most sustainable was building a community of like-minded sports bettors. I know there are inevitable cycles of winning or losing that comes with giving out picks. So because of it, I wanted to give you something that can last longer than one game. I wanted to give you the ability to be a smarter and more informed sports better, to see the games in the process of sports betting differently. At the same time, I want to have a crap ton of fun all along the way. I'm an entertainment better. Sure, I like to win, but most of all, I want to have action all over the place. When you combine both of these things, plus have a long-term betting mindset, you get a winning recipe. And speaking of winning, it was a good weekend for me, both with the podcast picks and my own action. For the picks I gave out on the podcast, I went one and one, hitting on the Saints, losing on the Cowboys, my six-point teaser of the Patriots and Broncos hit, and for the second consecutive week, the Big Mick Bet of the Week won. This week, we didn't even have to sweat it out at all as the seven-team Moneyline Parlay hit with the lowest margin of victory being 25 points. And to give some insight into how I constructed the bet, in college, I took the top five highest spreads of the week, which were each over 20 points, plus the two highest NFL games, both double digits. That gave me a payout of minus 202, where a $10 bet wins about five bucks. Remember, it's not always this easy though. Last week we saw the Rams lose at home as big favorites versus the Bucks, and the Chiefs lost as a double digit favorite against the Colts this week. I'll be giving out my big Mick bet of the week on the Thursday show as the money lines aren't out yet for the college games. One thing I wanna do is mention that I always post my bets on Twitter at Rob Cressy. This is important to note because we record the Sharp 600 earlier in the week, so we don't always have all of the information available to us. I usually lay down my action over the course of the week. As I've said before, my process for selecting the games I bet is a combination of pooling the opinions and picks of a few trusted sources and matching it up with my own thoughts. It just so happens, over the last two weeks, we've been running hot. But remember, we also have to have a long-term mindset. Just as quickly as you can run hot, you can run cold. So enjoy the hot weeks and don't get too down on the cold ones. Plus, if you're an entertainment better like myself, if nothing else, you're having a blast along the way. Next order of business, the community bet. The game we were all on together was Auburn minus three at Florida. I had a ton of fun rooting for the game on Twitter with everyone. For such a high profile game, boy was it sloppy. Four turnovers by each team, gross. To give some insight on the community side of things, 45% of you were on Auburn minus three, 36% of you were on Florida plus three, 
including myself, 7% on the over, 12% on the under in the under cashed. As for this week, I threw out on Twitter a call for what this week's community bet should be at speed 323232. Patrick Kelly and Brandon Dubray all said USC versus Notre Dame. I like this game. It's high profile. Notre Dame's laying 11 and a half, which is a huge number. The totals aren't out yet. So stay tuned to Twitter when they are, as I'll put the poll out and we'll make this our community bet of the week. We've got a big celebration going on for the 200th episode of the Sharp 600 podcast. To celebrate, Covers is running a contest. To enter, all you've got to do is engage with a Twitter post by sharing it. Two prizes will be awarded. First prize, a one month subscription to the Covers Legends Handicapper at Covers Experts. This has a value of $500. And second prize, a covers swag pack. We appreciate you for listening to the Sharp 600 and have loved having you part of our community. Remember, all you've got to do to enter is share a Twitter post. And joining me on the show is Ed Miller, author of The Logic of Sports Betting. You can follow him on Twitter at Ed Miller Poker. Ed, great to have you on the show. Hey, thank you very much. Good to be here. First off, I recently read your book and I really enjoyed it. One thing that I try and do is bring a teaching in mindset element to this show and to give insight into the decision-making process of myself as well as the guest. One theme that I hammer home is get comfortable being uncomfortable. And a thing you mentioned in the book really resonated a ton with me. Treat sports betting like an Easter egg hunt. When all the other kids run one direction, you run the other. Look for the eggs a little less out in the open. It's more fun anyways. Can you elaborate that a bit or elaborate on that a bit? Sure. Yeah, I think, uh, you know, I, I think, uh, you know, first of all, you know, sports betting is tough. I mean, anyone who's done it for a while knows that, you know, it can be really frustrating. You think, you know, oh, I'm sure this and then and then they play the games and <laughs> well, you weren't right. And so, you know, what that's done is kind of forced me, you know, to kind of take an approach where I'm going to try to find a little bit the road less traveled. So I'm going to look at the, you know, the biggest thing that people are doing. Everybody's analyzing these, you know, kind of like NFL say, you know, NFL point spreads. And we were talking about them all day. But, you know, if I'm going to bet, you know, instead, I'm going to take that work that I do, you know, on the NFL point spread. And I'm going to look to see if that same work can be applied to other bets. So I'm going to look at derivative bets. I'm going to look at quarter bets, you know, uh, half bets. I'm going to look at, you know, maybe some prop bets uh, and, and see if the same work, the same ideas could be used to attack, you know, things that are kind of um, not the most obvious, you know, bets available to the, to the public. And can you share anything that you think is absolutely necessary to have a winning betting mindset? Sure. I think, I think, I think you need to be flexible. I think you need to be willing to, uh, when, when the world is telling you that you're wrong <laughs> about something, you know, it is not to be stubborn is to listen. You know, the, the, the market is, is, is not infallible by any stretch, but at the same time, it is also wise and it is best to be flexible and to look at what the market's telling you. And if it's telling you something different than what you're thinking, um, take that very seriously. All right. So when looking at the market, I think a lot of people would say you've got the sharps versus the public. So you hear reverse line movement or the public's on this side, but the sharps are on this side. And oftentimes the sharps are on these grosser looking games. And you're like, man, I don't understand this. This doesn't make sense. So how can you help correlate or choose between the two? So I, I think that it, I always think that sharps versus public uh, dynamic thing is, is I, I feel like while there's, there's some truth to what it is, there's also, I feel like it's a little bit of an oversimplified, you know, paradigm. First of all, the sharps are often, um, you know, are, are a diverse groups. Some are sharper than others. You know, there's kind of like, the, the, the kingpin sharps, then the, there's kind of the hanger on sharps, and then there's the kind of wannabe sharps. And, you know, all those people tend to get lumped into the one group, the sharps, and then the public is in another group. 
Um, and also, you know, how that affects lines is complicated because the way lines get made is, it is a complicated process. It's a, it's, you know, what I call price discovery where, you know, people bet the line and that, and that moves the line, but there's a lot of sports books and, and they kind of copy each other also. So a little bit of money at one sports book can actually move a line more than a lot of money at a different sports book. So it, it's, it's, I, I always find that dynamic complicated and I try to look beneath the surface of what they say, okay, the sharps are here, the public's here. And, and, and I, honestly, I do my own work. I do my own handicapping work. And, um, you know, and again, I'm, I'm often trying to look for kind of those bets beneath the surface, the derivative bets, the prop bets, and use, use kind of all of that information to my advantage to find uh, those Easter egg bets, if it were, as, you know. So let's talk about the prop bet opportunity because it's one where, as I'm looking forward, you've seen the rise in DFS and now prop bets are starting to come out. And I feel like as a sports better, we have a greater opportunity to win because in theory you could say, all right, I'm going to take um, Devonte Adams when healthy over 84 and a half yards today, as opposed to Packers plus three and a half, the, the expected outcomes, I just feel like I have way less control and you can pick and choose various matchups. So there may be a greater opportunity on the prop side of things. Can you sort of share a little bit more about your props mindsets? Sure. So there's kind of two reasons why the props have offer more opportunity. Uh, first is that, is that, is that there are smaller markets to get less scrutiny. So the big markets, the point spread, the money line, the total, the way those markets get made is those markets get put up and people start banging them immediately. And there's money coming in on both sides and that money moves the market. And every time someone, that money is an opinion, that money is somebody's opinion on that, on that bet. And as soon as you get this kind of enough people's opinions backed by money, you get a pretty good answer, <laughs> you know? It really converges pretty quickly towards something that it becomes hard to outsmart, you know, the whole world banging money in on, on a certain thing. Whereas with the props, you know, first of all, they're a lot more sensitive to news. So for instance, you know, um, like let's say some, someone lands on an injury report on Wednesday or Thursday. Well, is that gonna move the side, you know, the money line? I mean, it might move it five cents maybe, you know, in, in value. Is that gonna move a specific purse player's prop? You know, if this guy's injured, what about the next guy in line? What are his, pro I mean, that can move that specific prop like much more. So, you know, th that's one way. Another way is you can just, um, when there is legitimate line movement, often that really should be pulling all the prices of the props with it, you know, and, and, and here you can look at team props. Let's say there's a total, a total moves, you know, four points, you know, a total starts at 43, moves to 47. What does that mean about the total touchdowns in the game prop? What does that mean about, honestly, the total field goals in the game prop? What does that mean about, you know, the chance that one team is going to score three in a row? What does that mean about all these props that, you know, are, are built, they're really built on that game line and, and those main spread and totals contribute to the pricing of those props. And once you understand how that dynamic works, you'll see that sometimes that game line will move, but you know, someone's going to forget to move that touchdown prop, you know, it's just going to sit there at the same price. And so that's how you can kind of use that information that's in the market to find those, you know, lesser, lesser scrutinized bets and find, you know, kind of better value. Yeah, and this is something that's certainly going to become more part of my sports betting card. One, it's equally as fun. Two, there's way more action. And three, I feel like I have significantly more control over it. Certainly when you think about the large majority of sports bettors who also play fantasy. So coming into it, you have a little bit more context than you would, all right, do you really know the left tackle of the Arizona Cardinals on and where, what is his status and what is the impact on something like that? Uh, I really like your mindset when it comes to props. Uh, here's a question for you. In the book, you talk a lot about pricing. And one thing I'm curious about is, should we be buying a half point to get on a key number? Uh, I, it completely depends on how much they charge you for it. I mean, it's just like anything in this world, you know, should you buy it? Well, is it, is it, is it a good price? You know, uh, in general, I would say sports books these days tend to know what the the half points are worth, you know, especially in a big sport like football, they, I don't see a ton of deals on buying points, but that doesn't mean there aren't any deals. 
uh, out there, but you know, it, it's, it's, you know, from what I've seen here, if you want to buy onto the three or off the three, for instance, you know, everyone knows that's a key number and, you know, they charge you through the nose, <laughs> you know, and, and to me, that's, you know, that's not worth it. Um, what I do try to do is I, again, going back to the derivatives, oftentimes you can find um, alternative spreads. So, so this is becoming more and more common that sports books are offering, okay, well, the main spread is, you know, three and a half, say, and you say, okay, and they'll let you buy that half point to get, you know, the three, and, but they're going to, you know, charge you like minus 130, minus 135 to get there, which is not a good deal. But they'll offer, also offer like an alternative spread on the game. And then there's a money line, right? So you can, you can buy the points by just buying the money line instead of buying, you know, the point. Or they'll offer, they'll put up a, you know, a plus two and a half at some price, or they'll put up a minus six and a half at some price. And to be honest with you, I see a lot of times those bets are often mispriced. You know, they get the, they, the sports books have the, okay, well, I should charge you this much for this half point down. But then once it's like, oh, now I'm moving three points, now I'm moving six points, they don't get it right. That's very interesting. I like your thought process on this. So can you help us? In, in a simplified version, understand the role that pricing has. I know it's such a big part of your book, but I think the casual sports bettors, if they're going to see a minus 118 versus a minus 108, someone like you that's going to be a drastically different uh, bet, whereas someone on my end would see it and be like, whatever, I, I get the minus three on there. So what, like, what can you teach us about simplified pricing so we can better understand uh, what's too much when, when a lot of people aren't doing the math and not doing the analytics, they're more casual betters. Right. I mean, well, first of all, I mean, if you're a casual better, I mean, you know, on one hand, don't worry about it too much. If you, if you want it, I mean, you're betting for fun. If, if you're going to have more fun having the three instead of the three and a half, I mean, go for it, you know? So, so that's the, my first point. I, I don't see anything wrong with that at all. Uh, you know, the way I look at it, I mean, the first thing I do is I convert everything to a break-even percentage. I think that's much easier to think about. So, you know, for instance, that minus 108, you know, is going to be a break-even percentage of about 52. So I think about it as like a, that bet isn't a minus 108. That, bite, that bet costs 52, okay? And then the minus 118 is closer to a, you know, a 54, you know, 54 and a half. So, so you can think of it almost like it's a stock price. And it's like, okay, am I going to buy this at 52 or am I going to buy it at 54? And it's a slightly different price, right? And what I'm trying to do, you know, when I'm betting sports is often that two cents, you know, on the, on the price, that's all the difference, right? It's, it's, like, it's like if I was going to buy a stock and I was going to, you know, say, okay, well, this stock, I like the stock, I'm going to buy it. I'm going to buy it at 52. Am I going to buy it at 54 or maybe buy a slightly different stock at 54? You know, it's, it's, Often that makes all the difference because these things are priced efficiently. And so, you know, it can be good to buy something at 50. Like, like you know, you, you see some of these, these there's, I started looking at this election market on predict it, you know, and I, I was, there's some long shot things I wanted to buy yesterday. And, you know, there was one I wanted to buy and it had the price listed at six. But if I wanted to buy it at that moment, I had to pay seven. And I didn't want to pay seven. I wanted to pay six. You know, because you get much, you get a, that much bigger payoff, you know, that, it, you know, and, and so all that stuff matters. That, that's all I would say. And, and, and if you're in it in the, from this kind of analytical, I want to grind out a profit perspective, you really have to sweat every one of those cents. If we want to get better at being sports betters, is there anything you can recommend that we can do on a week to week basis to work on that muscle. So I'm someone who's always seeking constant improvement, trying to learn from stuff. And we're not always the most analytical, but in the name of improvement, if someone says, like, for example, I always say, get comfortable being uncomfortable. So I created a, hey, what is your uncomfortable bet of the week? Where you take a team or a bet that is uncomfortable by nature to teach you the muscle of it to get used to it. So you say, all right, now I can see opportunities where others may say, oh my God, I don't want that. Okay, so, so I'm a little biased because we, uh, I also, in, in addition to writing the book, The Logic of Sports Betting, we um, launched a company called Deck Prism Sports where we're providing in-play odds. But my answer to this question is 100% that you should watch games and keep the in-play live odds feed open. And wh 
while you watch the game. Because, because the, the thing with sports betting, if you're just looking at it from a pregame perspective, there aren't that many data points. I mean, there's, there's, you know, with football, there's 16 games a week, you know, NFL football, that's it. You know, all those are 16 different situations. There's not a lot of like, okay, now the Dolphins are playing the Patriots. Oh, wow, the line's really big. Well, should it be 23 or should it be 25? I don't know. You know, it's hard to build that intuition, right? The thing that live betting gives you is it gives you, it keeps a lot of those things constant. It's the same two teams, you know? Okay, the line now is, you know, minus three. Now the team scores a touchdown. Now the line's minus, you know, minus eight, right? And, and you can kind of track through the game and same thing with the totals. You can watch the same two teams. You're keeping a lot of the kind of variables constant and you're building that intuition, that muscle that you're talking about for, for saying, you know, what should the line be? You know, and, and this is what I see with live betting. I see when people talk about live betting, I see honestly that they have no intuition whatsoever for what the line should be. You know, I see a lot of tweets, you know, where people are saying, oh man, it's, you know, minus eight here. That's crazy. And I, you know, I have my model sitting in front of me and guess what? Minus eight's the right number, <laughs> you know, and, and it's, and it's, and it's frankly, because I'm right and I've done the work and I've, you know, I've built a whole system to produce that minus eight, uh, you know, math, mathematically, and they're kind of just winging it based on what makes sense in their head and their intuition's wrong. So, so to me, that's the best thing you could do is to watch the game and then watch the in-play lines and just kind of get used to all those different situations that can happen in a game and what that does to that line. And, and, and then you'll be able to see, if you do that enough, you'll be able to see when it's wrong because it's wrong a lot, <laughs> you know? And, and if you build up that intuition, those, those wrong ones will start to pop at you. Yeah, and I've noticed that in the the live betting that I have done when I get excited about it, the first thing is I'll notice an opportunity. So you can take a team like the chiefs who make it down like against the Raiders or down 10, nothing or something. So the little light bulb in your head's like, ah, oh, I wonder what the live betting looks like. And then you pop over there and you still see that the, the chiefs are whatever minus 150 to win the game or something, but then it could become 17, nothing. You're like, Oh, all right. And just by watching it, you become more aware, and I think the awareness is the key in some of these non-traditional sports betting opportunities. You need to be more aware of the opportunity, and then does the opportunity match what you're seeing, and then boom, all of a sudden, all of this aligns, let's do this. Right, like for live betting, I mean, this, as I say, there's a lot of errors. The type of errors that you'll see in the lines are often real simple. Like, they price the bet with – like as if they made an extra point and guess what? They missed the extra point. You, you watch them miss the extra point. The line comes up and there's basically an extra point in the total, you know, that shouldn't be there. And, and, you know, and that's the kind of thing that if you build that muscle, if you watch these lines, you know, over and over again, you watch games, you see how the lines move. You get to say like, you'll see these spots and they'll be like, Oh, they missed an extra point. Let me check the line. Bam. That's, you know, they, they messed it up. They got the point in there, you know, and, and, and that happens all the time. They, they, they mix up money lines. They price it as if the ball were on the wrong side of the field. So they'll price it like, you know, the Broncos have the ball at their own 30. They'll throw up a price like they have it at their opponent's 30 just, just for one time out, right? It's just like a little blip in the data feed and it'll just be priced wrong, you know, and, and the more you, build that intuition the more you'll see that number and you'll be like well that's all right you know and that and, and those are the real opportunity those are really good bets i mean if you get to bet on the broncos you know or against the broncos you know in this example because you know the the person making the line thinks the broncos are 40 yards up the field from where they actually are i mean that's a that's a really good bet so so last thing i want to get you out on is something nfl week six related and it's actually been a trend over the entire betting season in a unique way and it's these crazy high double digit spreads versus awful teams some of them actually being on the road we're looking at the dolphins jets redskins i think the Bengals are starting to get into this territory so even looking this week baltimore minus 12 versus cincy patriots minus 17 versus the giants and you're seeing these huge numbers and traditionally i would someone who would be like you know what i believe in being uncomfortable give me the big number with the home team 
even if it feels absolutely disgusting. But all of a sudden, we're starting to see these teams are so bad. And it reminds me of a few years ago when the Cleveland Browns were terrible. And I would continually hear week after week, oh, the Sharps are on the Browns, the Sharps are on the Browns. And I would watch as the Browns are losing by 20-plus points a week where I'm like, listen, this doesn't make sense to me. I get value. But at some point, uh, the things don't align. So what's your thought process? Because you're an analytical type person. Like, does your analytics uh, account for how atrocious a team like the Dolphins has been? Yeah, so, so first of all, this is, this, it's interesting that you asked this question because this is actually an improvement that we've made. In our, so again, we have our, our models. We put a lot of work building our models, and we actually rebuilt our football over the offseason because some of the teams last season even were starting to break our models. The, uh, the Chiefs were breaking it in the other way by being ridiculously good, especially on offense, you know, kind of better than, than kind of NFL teams tend to be. And, and this year you're seeing it in the other direction. So we rebuilt our models to be more able to price correctly these like particular outlier teams. You know, and I would say a lot of it is, 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 is still a little bit guesswork. I mean, you look at, you know, so, you, so far they've played, what, five games? You know, some of them only played four. And, you know, that, that's, it's not a lot of snaps. I mean, it's a few hundred snaps per team. And, you know, and you're just kind of filling in the gaps with, with the best way you can with the eyeball test, with the, you know, how bad is this team? You can look and say, okay, well, the yardage is bad. You know, and then how much do I believe that? How much do I want to pull that back and assume, you know, well, this is not quite real. They're still an NFL team, et cetera. You just kind of make your best guess. And then, and then our process here is that we then, you know, make our best guess and then we run our model, you know, and our model essentially gives us an answer for what the line should be. And, and, and you know, to be honest, I don't, I don't necessarily think there is any systematic you know, value to be had, quote unquote, you know, sharp value on just betting blindly these big underdogs. I, I don't see that right now. Yeah, I agree. Awesome. Uh, Ed, I really enjoyed your book. And I highly recommend everyone check it out because it'll help you be a more informed better and, and really think about how often are people investing in the knowledge to become more better from a fundamental side of things. And I think certainly as the legalization of sports betting across the United States is happening and the opening up of props in live in game. It's going to be more important for all of us to be as informed as possible to understand what's going on. And for me, your book really helped open up those insights because I can follow the entire marketing industry a lot more. Where can everybody connect with you? So the best way to talk to me is on Twitter. I'm on Twitter too much. <laughs> uh, so my handle, again, is Ed Miller Poker. So you can uh, ping me there um, if you want to get in touch. Uh, you can buy the book. You can borrow it from the library or, or whatever you want to do. And I'm um, happy always to talk about this stuff. And I want to hear from you. Are you live betting at all? And actually, I've got something that I want all of us to do together and that is place at least one live bet this sports betting week because I want you to experience what Ed was talking about. I want you to open it up, and I want you to let me know what that is. You can hit me up on Twitter, at Rob Cressy. Make sure to use hashtag Sharp600 and be part of our community. Also, make sure to tag at covers. And one thing that I mention in every single episode is it really helps us out. If you dig the show, is if you subscribe, rate, and review. When you do... I'll give you a shout out on the podcast. We got three we're giving out this week. First one from JR87NY. Gave it five stars. Good show. Like the insight. But can you make it a little bit longer? Maybe 30 minutes or so. I wish I could. I would love to give you guys everything. But we've got to keep it to a certain level. Next one, Max underscore kill. Uh, I get the sense that Rob is really looking out for the listener's best interests. He makes my gambling more informed and fun. And Ed, you are a part of that because you've helped me become an informed better. And I'm sharing that knowledge with others like Max. And then the last one uh, from someone, DNFDHD. Don't be a square, get down with a sharp 600 and play ugly to cash tickets. All of them gave us five stars. I really appreciate each of you. Also, make sure to check into Bet America for the $1,000 risk-free bets. And remember, if you want to be a sharp, don't be a square with your bankroll. 
be disciplined with your money management.